Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Epcot for the opening day of the International Food and Wine Festival 2021. I am so excited to try some of the new food and drink offerings and also some of the returning classics. Anywho's, let's go do this. The best way to start a fun day at the Food and Wine Festival is by saying hi to Mickey and Minnie as they greet the guests that are coming in for the day. Isn't that magical? One of my favorite things about food festivals is you get a big variety of things that you can try in little portions. So we're going to have a good mix of different drinks, snacks, and just general food items. And then we're going to come back and do more because it's almost impossible to do everything in one day. I've come to these festivals for years now and it literally takes me probably a good like two months before I actually experience all of the festival has to offer. We're going to dive right on into the boots and the first one that we've come across is the donut box and they've got some actually really good menu items. Lots of donuts, hence the name, but one thing that caught my eye is the chef's donut of the day. So of course it being opening day, I got to try the opening day donut. Here are the donuts of the day and from what I'm hearing is they're going to have basically like a donut per day. So they're going to handful of donuts that they're going to rotate throughout the week. So there's going to be a Monday donut and a Tuesday donut and a Wednesday donut and a Thursday donut. The best thing is, is they're making these donuts fresh right here. Like they are doing it in house in the donut box. It's time to make the donuts. They also have a chicken donut. Look at that. It's like a chicken sandwich donut. And that's chipotle on it? Sriracha. Sriracha. Oh boy. I'm happy. I got the lemon blueberry. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know where I can eat this. It looks like all the trash cans and tables are taken up. So I guess we're going to have to be a little creative. I think I might just go take this on the grassy knoll and have a donut under a monorail track. I think that would be very fancy. Oh look, there's a couple of kids up there. I have to be honest with you, this is my first time eating a donut underneath a monorail track and I'm happy to share this moment with you. So here we go, the lemon blueberry donut of the day. This might be a little messy. That is so amazing, so fresh, it's still hot. I absolutely love it. Now, uh, I've never had a donut from the donut box before. I think last year I skipped over it, I just got a drink. but. They make those donuts right there and they are amazing. And look at look at this beautiful view. There's a lot of families up here just hanging out and picnic style and just sitting down eating some food and wine. And I got the little monorail track back there kind of keeping me shade. It's really nice. I'm happy I did this. I wish that we can have like unique places to sit down and eat once we get in the World Showcase, but most of it's going to be trash cans and uh, tables and probably just the ground itself. That's just how food and wine is and I love it. So Cheers to the donuts. <laughs> As I'm making my way past the donut box again, I stopped and I was like, oh, what is this new like effect on the ground that Epcot's doing? And then I realized these are all just M&Ms. Look at it. It's all M&Ms being crushed into the ground from the candy jar donut. They're just falling off the donuts and people are stepping on them. That blows my mind. I thought it was like some kind of new design. I love that donut, but now I think it's time we actually spice it up a little bit and we're going to do something brand new to the Food and Wine Festival this year. And I'm excited because it's two of my favorite things. The Epcot Experience Brewing Wing. So we've got beers and ciders and buffalo wings. Literally, can you ask for a better combination? And I haven't seen the Epcot Experience this packed for since like it first opened. Wow, bringing new life in here. I'm always a sucker for the beer flights and it looks like they're offering a beer flight and a cider flight here So I'm definitely gonna get the beer flight and then they have a variety of different wings with different sauces I do want to try something a little bit different instead of just getting mild or buffalo wings So we'll see what other ones they got and then decide Here is a look at all of the wings or the sauces. They have garlic parmesan, barbecue, teriyaki, traditional mango And then of course the beer flight. Look at that. Oh a nice pineapple vibe I could dig that. I like pineapple. And then I think maybe I'll try teriyaki. Now it's time for some beer and wings. I'm very excited. I have a little bit of a buyer's regret though. I wanted to get something kind of like snazzy, so I ended up getting the teriyaki with the sesame seeds. But I feel like I should just get the buffalo wings. I love buffalo wings. But who knows? Maybe I might really like these. They do look pretty good though, I have to say. I mean, look at that. $7, four wings. I don't know. What do you guys think price-wise? 
I mean, I remember when wing night used to be like 10 cents for wings. Do you remember that? It was so cool. So like this would have cost 50 cents on wing night at a local bar. But here at Epcot, they're almost $2 a wing. <laughs> Gotta start with the flats. I love flats. All right, there we go. Break it right down the middle. Mmm. These are really good. They kind of remind me of Ohana. Oh, okay, I'm happy. <laughs> they also got a good crunch to it. I love that uh, fried wind skin. Fried wing skin taste. I know that came out like really fast, but you know what I'm talking about. And I like it a lot. Like these are actually very decent. I might want to come back and try the buffalo ones and maybe the Parmesan ones. I like garlic Parmesan. I really do like these though. I think they are like Ohana and they're not very uh, saucy wings. They're very, not so saucy, but they are sticky. So make sure you wipe your fingers before touching any buttons. Ooh, trash can. <laughs> And here is the beer flight. We got Pineapple Vibes Blonde Ale. We got a Blood Orange IPA. And then a Watermelon Dragon Fruit Sour. So I'm excited to try all of these. First things first, we're trying the Pineapple Vibes Blonde Ale. And I love pineapple beer. During the Flowery Garden Festival, they had a pineapple flight. And it was amazing. And I remember actually coming back and getting it multiple times. So here we go. Cheers to the pops. <laughs> Oh, that is good. Oh, nice. No kickback. Nice pineapple. Kind of like a cider. Like a little cidery-ish. I am not a big fan of sours, so I think I'm going to dive right on into the watermelon dragon fruit and get it out of the way. I mean, sometimes they're very delicious. One thing I'm excited for is over in Germany, you know how they have the uh, very popular Schoffenheifer grapefruit. Well, they actually have a Schoffenheifer cherry beer, and I cannot wait to make my way over there and try that. So now it's time for the sour. Oh, at least it's like nice. It doesn't taste like a beer. I don't think sours taste like beer. They just taste like sours, but that one has a good watermelon taste to it. I think I'm gonna just jump right into the IPA since we're here. Since you're here. <laughs> And this is a blood orange one. That's my favorite. Oh yeah, the blood orange IPA. That's the way to go. <laughs> if you like sours, you'll probably really enjoy that beer. Or if you don't like hoppy beers, you'll like that beer as well. If you like the Schoffenhofer grapefruit, then the watermelon dragon fruit sour is the way to go. But for me, the favorite was the IPA. Not too hoppy, not any kickback. And then the pineapple vibe, probably my second favorite. Now that we had some wings and some beers, we haven't even made it into World Showcase yet. So we're gonna head right on in and get some of the boots like by country. That's kind of funny. We started off, we did two boots and they weren't even in World Showcase. I can't even believe that, it's pretty awesome. Something about walking around World Showcase during food and wine. It really is amazing. You get to smell nice things. Hi friends, see nice friends. How you guys doing? Thank you. <laughs> see what I mean? You get to run into friends and enjoy all World Showcase. And now we're coming up on a brand new stand this year and I'm excited because I like the name of it. It has such a cool name. The Swanky Saucy Swine. Look at that, and it's all about the pork. Pork rinds, porchetta, sticky ribs, crispy pig ear salad, lots of amazing things. I remember like back home, we had porchetta nights, you know, like at the VFW and stuff. So I think I'm gonna get the porchetta and then also maybe the ribs. I don't know, we gotta see how big they are. This porchetta looks so amazing. Have any of you guys ever had porchetta nights? Or is that something only up in Pennsylvania? I don't know, but I absolutely love those nights and that's why I ended up just getting the porchetta. It looked like it was big enough that I didn't need to get two. And plus, it'll make me uh, come back and try something else with that stand because I really like the name of it. It is really fancy. And here it is, the roasted porchetta with pork fat roasted rosemary potatoes and lemon parsley salsa verde. Doesn't that look absolutely amazing? I don't, want to, I don't even want to break into it. Oh, and these potatoes look amazing. Oh, look how soft they are. This is gonna be so amazing. So delicious too. 
I think we're going potato first. It is super hot out today. Like I'm kind of like blinded by the sunlight actually. It's amazing how the first day of food and wine has such beautiful weather. It is 92 degrees, but the humidity makes it feel like it's 98. And uh, yeah, I can feel like it's 98. So here's the potato. Here's the potato. Wow. Wow. The fact that that's with that, that potato is something it could be on its own. Like they could just have those potatoes as a side. In fact, I'm gonna need another one. <laughs> Seriously, those potatoes could be something that they could just sell on their own. Now I'm gonna dive in to the porchetta. Look at this. I'm gonna grab a nice little spot right here. Oh yeah, this is it right there. A little bit of that lemon salsa. Oh yeah, just the way we need it. And here's to porchetta. I will gladly revisit that stand just to get this on its own. This is such a great meal. You get the porchetta, the potatoes, everything together. I feel like this might be my favorite thing so far. I mean, I don't know what, what else we're going to be getting, but it's going to be hard to top it. It really is. And depending on what part of the porchetta you get, it's just so amazing. And the lemon salsa is to die for. Look at that. I'm gonna add a little combination potato porchetta. Potato, potato porchetta. <laughs> you gotta get all in one bite, you know what I mean? <laughs> Earlier I was talking about how I love festivals because you get to try a bunch of food with like small portions. This ain't no small portion. This is a lot of food. Like, honestly, I wanna eat it all because it's so delicious. I probably am gonna eat it all, but like, Honestly, you can eat this as a meal meal and it's under $10. I think it was seven bucks. Phenomenal. What a great price. It's going to be tough to beat the porchetta. I do have to say it was a good porchetta, but it's not as good as that, you know, hometown porchetta night at the VFW porchetta. It's still very, very delicious and it's going to be hard to beat here. But uh, I think we're going to move along. Maybe go over to China. Yeah, that's a good start. I was so excited to go to China to get something until I saw the line for the China booth. What are they selling? Like, what's going on here? Holy moly, I think we might have to move along. This is the longest line I think I've ever seen for a food and wine booth. Look at this. We're still going. We're not even close to where you actually enter in. What do they got going on in China? Something special. <laughs> I mean, this is... This is definitely like a 40 minute wait. Let's see, maybe it's the dumpings? Oh, it might be that bio bun. Bio bun. <laughs> oh, or the bai jo. I've had the bai jo punch before. I don't know. I think we're just gonna have to skip China and uh, go on to the next stand. Unfortunately, the next stand isn't open yet. So then uh, next country we'll go to. But this is one of the stands I was talking about. Uh, they're not fully open, not until October 1st. And I'm excited because we're gonna continuously have more food and wine to explore throughout the next couple months. India right here, coming soon. I mean, they've got the stand already. Everything's here, the menu's here. And uh, yeah, they're just not open yet. Warm Indian bread. Korma chicken. Ooh, that chicken sounds good. Right, sounds good. That, that was good <laughs> Earlier, I was talking about how excited I was to try the beer at Germany. It's the Cherry uh, Schoffenheifer. So that's where we're going next. We're going to get ourselves a nice Germany beer flight. And I don't know what other ones they have, but I'm excited. I mean, I love beer flights. So this will be the second one of the day, and I'm pumped. This is food and wine. And here it is, the Germany beer flight. Oh wow, this is gonna be so amazing. Right there it is, the Schoffenheifer Wild Cherry Hefeweizen. And I'm gonna guess it's that one right there. All of them probably look amazing. Kinda hard to pronounce, so I'm not even gonna go down that uh, road, but you can uh, read it if you'd like. <laughs> the first beer is gonna be the Gaffel in Cologne. I'm not too sure. Uh, so we're gonna try it here. Oh wow. Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be a much better beer flight than the beer and wing experience. I can already tell just by this first beer. And I don't even know how to pronounce the name of it. It's really, really good though. Now we've got the lager right here. We're just gonna go right in row, you know? 
And it's kind of funny because it looks like the other beer flight because that one had a watermelon dragon fruit sour and this one has the wild cherry Hefeweizen. Cheers to Megan. And we're gonna try the, the lager here. So good. Wow. And now I'm just gonna dive right into the cherry. Oh yeah. Oh, that is much too good. Oh wow. I like this better than the watermelon. I wasn't a big fan of the sour. This isn't a sour though. I love this beer flight a lot more than I like the beer flight at the beer and wing stand. But this one doesn't have wings. You could get uh, an apple strudel or a uh, bratwurst though. The wild cherry Schoffenheifer was very, very delicious. I'm not a big grapefruit beer fan, and I know that it's very popular here. Uh, so if you do like that beer, you're gonna love that wild cherry one. And even if you don't, you probably will like it because like I said, I don't like it because it's like very, it's kind of weak and it's very ciderish or like fruit beerish. but that wild cherry, it's just so delicious. Now the most important question of the day, did they switch the banners to Food and Wine Festival and the little train display here in Germany? Every single festival, they usually swap out the flags and light posts for whatever festival it is, like Food and Wine, uh, Flower and Garden, Festival of the Arts, and it looks like they did. I can't wait to show you here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But first, here comes the train. All aboard! <laughs> Look at that, they switched out the banners. It says food and wine. And also, can you guys see Goofy sitting on the bench? Let me know in the comments if you see Goofy in the picture there. Oh, look at the wind's blowing. I think that's amazing. That's what makes Disney so much special. Do you know what I mean? Like they went to the trouble of switching out those banners and I think that's amazing. It's Disney magic. Now we're gonna keep moving along. Like I said, we're not gonna do all of the boots. I mean, we're not gonna come close to doing half of the boots. We're just gonna pick and choose at some of the things that kind of caught my eye and, you know, made me intrigued to go all the way over there. So we're gonna skip over Italy and uh, we'll see what America has though. Sometimes they've got some good stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll just check it all out. Take it as it goes. Looks like we've come up to the American Pavilion and at the American Gardens Theater, they've got the Voices of Liberty playing right now. I don't know what time the show ended. Oh, it's 3.50, so we just missed this show. Looks like they'll come back on in another hour. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I love the Voices of Liberty. They're so amazing. I don't want to go down and join right now because I feel like that would be interrupting it. So we'll have to catch it another time. Since we're over here too, I think we'll take a look at some of the food and wine merchandise. They do have a fancy new spirit jersey, but way too hot for the spirit jersey right now. I mean, being in July, that's when the numbers actually go really, really up. Looks like we've got a lot of Swedish pie. Awesome to the core. And then here are the ears. And then this is the spirit jersey I was talking about. I don't know why, I like it a lot. It's very, very nice. And I like the way that they have it as sweet as pie. I don't know how the front looks. See, that's really thick. Some of them actually have like a nice cool fabric to it, but not that one. Ooh, they have a nice jacket down here too. Apple orchards, look at that. I like this jacket. Ooh, it says Epcot in the front. Oh, wow. I wouldn't mind this. This is actually like a lighter material than that spirit jersey is. This is fancy. And since we're over in the American Pavilion, we might as well see what's at the Hops and Barley Market. Now I hear they have one new menu item that I'm kind of interested in trying. The Hot Beef Sandwich. Look at that. Served horseradish cream and pickled veggies. They also have a carrot cake, which I think they're bringing back. Oh, and they have another beer flight. Oh boy. Should I go all in on a beer flight again? I mean, <laughs> It is delicious, and the beer flights aren't that large. So I think that they are 12 ounces. So if they have three of them, I think they're three ounce pours. So three, six, or maybe four ounce pours. So four, eight, 12. Yeah, so 12 ounces, I think. But I don't know if I like all the different variety here. I don't know, we'll see when we get up there. Here is a look at the menu. Look at that lobster roll, and then this is the hot beef sandwich. Doesn't that look amazing? The carrot cake, and you know what? I think I'm gonna get it. Might as well get the beer flight. I mean, we've tried most of the other ones that we've come across, so might as well keep the train rolling. Oh, here we go. Found a nice little spot on a brick wall to eat my hot beef sandwich and my beer flight. Look at that bad boy, though. Doesn't that look amazing? 
holy moly i got no horseradish cream on it only because i wasn't sure what to expect but i think it looks good just the way it is well this kind of counts as a fancy seating arrangement i'm sitting on a brick wall eating a hot beef sandwich and i'm excited to try it because it looks phenomenal i think we got a contender with the porchetta just by looks alone i think i'm gonna like this a lot the bread looks amazing look at that bread look at all of it it actually it's really really good i can't wait to bite into it i think i'm going for it right now actually hot beef sandwiches on a brick wall <laughs> oh and the Macho Libre. Oh, this is really great. Oh, yeah. We got a contender. It is so good. And those pickled veggies have such a spice to it. Definitely a kick. Oh, boy. I don't know what to, I don't know what to think. Which one is better? I'm going to have to think about this. I'm glad I got that beer flight back there because this definitely does have a spice to it. <laughs> Dare I say, this roast beef might be better than the porchetta? I don't know. I think because of the sheer value of the porchetta, the porchetta is still going to take the top spot for me. But this is amazingly delicious. It's a little small though. Just a little bit. But that beef to bread combination, phenomenal. Amazing. And it's not even soggy. Like it held together good. It was all about the bun. I feel like the bun and the bread always make a sandwich. Most important part. Now we're going to have to dive in to the beer flight. And we got a strawberry lime from Tampa, Florida. Uh, a Sweetwater Brewing Company Hazy IPA. And then a Brewing Boom Sauce. Oh boy. If we look at it from this angle, I think this is going to be the strawberry lime. Looks the lightest. Kind of like a cider. I do like strawberry and lime. So I also love <laughs> the uh, Macho Libre actually playing over there. It's like great for the drinking here. Okay, this was a sleeper. The strawberry lime beer was really good and it actually was so refreshing. All the other beers didn't taste like beer. They all tasted like cider, but this had a good balance of fruit and beer. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I actually really, really enjoyed this. I would get a whole uh, 12 ounce if I could actually. That's how good it was. Now it's time we move along to the hazy IPA. Oh, that's hoppy. Very, very hoppy. <laughs> and a good tradition, right along to the boom sauce. Oh, that's not too bad. Actually, that's not bad at all. So, definitely the strawberry lime first, the boom sauce second, and then the hazy third. Still, Germany has the best flight, I think. But uh, individually, the strawberry and lime beer here, that's top notch. Now we need to move along. Right next to America is Japan. And this is the line for the Japan uh, booth. Actually a very, very long line. Some of these booths have like cult classics where you always gotta come and you gotta get something. And I think uh, this year, Japan, they actually have the teriyaki chicken bun. And from what I've been seeing, a lot of people have been liking that. But I would have liked to try that lemon drop. But uh, I think it'll have to be another day, another vlog. Line just seems a little bit too long for me right now. Our next stop is going to take us here in Morocco to the Tangerine Cafe. And this actually reopened just for Food and Wine Festival. It's in the Food and Wine Guide. And they have the most anticipated dessert that I've seen personally I wanted to get. So I was super pumped to come try it. And here we are. We made it all the way this far. For the longest time, this was closed down. It was the quick service location, and now it reopened again. And I wanted to try this pistachio cake. Look how amazing that looks. I'm so excited. But then, I also see some grilled kebabs here. So maybe we might get some, some kebabs and some pistachio cake. Oh wow, it looks so fancy in here. I might actually have to sit down in here and eat it if I could. I love it. They've changed the whole inside. This is really, really cool. It's an actual food and wine stand that actually used to be a quick service stand. Crazy. Look at all this good looking food. Oh, there it is. That's the cake. Oh yeah, I've been waiting for that. What's the sauce that's on the beef usually? Is that like a horseradish? Uh, no, it's, a, uh, it's a mayo, right? A mayo? A mayo. Oh, see, yeah, I'm glad. I asked for the mayonnaise on the side. Well, the sauce on the side, I didn't know it was mayonnaise. Not a big fan of the mayo. <laughs> 
oh I feel fancy this is my first time today I got like a table and a seat I can sit down relax and enjoy some food the rest of the day I've been eating on grassy knolls brick walls and garbage cans so Morocco is really uh, starting off pretty strong and we got ourselves some beef kebabs the pistachio cake which looks so amazing I love pistachio so this is probably gonna be my favorite dessert I already can tell and I got some fresh squeezed blood orange juice look at that I think I'm just gonna try the fresh squeezed orange juice I mean it's definitely a hot day we need to keep up on our liquids we've had three beer flights but no uh, like non-alcoholic drinks so this will be our first oh that is good a little pulpy a little pu oh wow it's got like such a great orange aftertaste it kind of hit me as I was talking. I was going all about the pulp, and then all of a sudden I was like, ooh, very good, very good. Ah, oh, wow. Now I think we'll jump into the kebab, and I got it without the mayonnaise. Uh, I'm not a big fan of mayonnaise, so if you do ask for it, they actually grill you up a fresh skewer. So I was happy about that. So this is hot right off the grill, and I'm ready to try. Here it is. <laughs> That is very, very good. A little bit chewy, and I don't think you can actually ask for a preference, like on the temperature, but I love it. You add a little bit of this, and a little bit of the pico there, and that's how you do it. There we go. I took it off the skewer because I wanted to try a little bit of everything in one bite. Next time, I think I'm gonna try the chicken. The chicken looked really good. I think it was like a lemon, uh, lemon and herb uh, chicken, and this is kind of just on its own steak. It's a very delicious steak, though. But now it's time for the pistachio cake. I'm gonna dive right in. I am so excited. Oh, look at this. Look at how it just broke apart like that. I gotta get a little bit of everything. I want some of that white chocolate on top. And then of course the cake and the sauce. That's the perfect bite right there. I love pistachio. I love the pistachio baklava they used to have here. So the cake is probably gonna be phenomenal. And we're gonna find out right now. amazing I haven't had many desserts today but I gotta tell you this is the winner for me oh it's so good absolutely amazing and it goes well with the blood of orange uh, orange juice it is a little cakey though you know how you eat some cake you get a little bit of like a dry mouth so the orange juice comes in handy but it's not the preferable beverage to actually solve dry mouth so you might have to get a water or something else maybe at the next stand but it's still very, very good. Now that we've had a very delicious pistachio cake, it's time to move along. And here's the France booth. And this is an extremely long line too, because this kind of loops around. So this is another popular location so far. China and uh, Japan and then here have had the longest lines. Oh wow, this one actually goes all the way onto the bridge itself. We're going to have to break the chain here to actually get through them because it's kind of <laughs> blocking the walkway. Sorry, got to break the chain. I'm not going to do it in front of her. She's got her camera up. Maybe here. Ah, sorry. <laughs> there we go. And this is where it would end. So you would go down and then circle and then over here. And like I said, that's a long one. Today has to be the hottest food and wine like festival day I've seen in a long time. Usually it doesn't start in July, so it's early, but it is such a hot one. I'm sure if you watch tons of other videos today, they're all going to be saying, wow, it's really hot out. But believe me, it, it definitely is hotter than what it looks. A couple more popular stands that aren't open yet, like the Ireland stand. This is still closed until October 1st. And I know a lot of people want to get the Guinness and Bailey shake. So they're going to have to wait until then. Or that warm chocolate pudding cake. Ooh. Now I think the heat is starting to get to me, so I'm going to be making my way back out to the front of Future World. Maybe might stop at a couple of other boots that are on the way, if we see them or not. I don't know what they've got offering. Earth Eats is the only stand on the other side of Future World. When we walked in, we had the donut box, and then we came right into the brew and wings. Here is a look at the menu at Earth Eats, and most of this stuff is uh, Impossible Meats, hosted by Impossible. So they have the Impossible Burger Slider, Impossible Three Bean Chili, and then the Spiced Apple Twinnings Tea. So I think I actually might get the tea and maybe the chili, even though it's a hot day out. 
I still wouldn't mind some of that Kevin's famous chili. I feel like I'm a walking contradiction. It's really hot out, let's get ourselves some chili. But that's what I decided to do, and I'm excited because it looks good and it's impossible chili. Here it is. It looks like you get some Frito-Lays, some green onions on there. Normally some cheddar cheese too, but I went without the cheddar cheese and it looks really good. And then here is the apple cinnamon chai tea, iced. And you can get this with whiskey or you can get it without whiskey. And I am just so thirsty. So I'm probably gonna drink this real quick. I hope it's delicious. Definitely need a refreshing drink here. Oh yeah, that's refreshing. Oh, that's so good. Oh, <laughs> I need more. <laughs> I need more. Now it's time to dive into the chili. So we're gonna make sure we get at least some Frito-Lays on there, you know, and a couple of the three beans. Recently, I had the impossible chili. Recently, I had the impossible chili at the plaza, and it was. It was really good. It was a kind of like a spicy, it was like salsa and chili meat or chili mixed together. So I'm, I'm interested in seeing what this is like. So here we go. Wow. That is good. You can't even tell that's impossible chili. That is good. Honestly, that's better than Kevin's famous chili. Oh, I'm so happy I got this. I was very hesitant. I was like, should I just get the beef slider? Boop, I dropped a little bit there but I'm so glad that I got this because this was really, really good. I also like how sometimes you can get the uh, Frito-Lays like a little bit soft so they're not so crunchy. That is the perfect way. Oh, chili's good. I, I approve, Nate approved, Kevin approved. <laughs> and can we also talk about the size? This is $5.50. It is like a whole cup of chili. That is what a great value. That is seriously probably second best valued item other than the porchetta the porchetta that was like a standalone like you can't get better than that with value price per quantity but this is a close second of anything we've had today it's so hot out the water just up and evaporated out of future world all we got is rocks <laughs> and with that well and with that impossible chili I think we are done here today. I got to eat a lot of things and drink a lot of things and still there's much more to cover. So I'm definitely gonna be coming back to the Food and Wine Festival, probably with friends and just enjoying all the festivity amenities and boots and shopping. And there's even a couple scavenger hunts that I can do. So this is like an ongoing series. So you're gonna see a lot more food and wine videos to come. And uh, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Before we head out though, we have to say goodbye to that beautiful spaceship Earth. Look at the skies. Seriously, as hot as it was today, it was the perfect day for the opening day of Food and Wine. It is so just clear sky, sun, the heat is really high, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I take that all back. I would have another way. I wish it was like 70 or 80 degrees, but with all this other beautiness. But I guess you can't take, I can't, I guess you can't get the best of both worlds.